Hi guys. Here's section 2.2, .2, the derivative as a function. Last time we talked about the derivative f prime of a, which tells you the slope of the tangent line to f of x at the point where x equals a. Here's its definition. That limit, by the way, is always a 0 over 0 type limit. You have to actually do some work to figure out what it equals, or if it even equals anything. Okay. But now what I want to do is say, instead of picking a particular point, a, I'm going to just replace the a with an x, so it could be any point on the graph of f of x. So now I'm looking for f prime of x. Well, I'm replacing a with x, so I replace a with x. And now I have a thing with x's in it, and it will tell me the slope of the tangent line to my graph at any point, any x value on the graph. But not only that, notice that this thing is a function. It's got an input, you give it an x, and an output, it produces an f prime of x. That output, by the way, tells you the slope of the original function at whatever x value you put in. So what does that look like? Here's a nice function, y equals f of x. I would like to know what y equals f prime of x looks like if I graphed it. Well, f prime of x is supposed to give me the slope of the original function f at every x value. So, for starters, let's figure out when f prime of x is going to be 0. Well, that would mean that the original function's slope would be 0, and that happens when the tangent lines are horizontal. Right? Horizontal lines have slope 0. So at these two points, the original function has slope 0, and so f prime of x should have value 0. That is, f prime of x is going to be at the y value 0, so we'll hit those two points uh, down on the x-axis there. What happens in between those two points and on either side of them? Well, just look at the original function. It's got a positive slope for a while, then it hits one of those horizontal places, then it's got a negative slope, then it hits the other horizontal place, and then it's got a positive slope again. When the slope is positive, f prime of x should have a positive value, so it should be up above the x-axis. And when the slope is negative, f prime of x should have a negative value. It should be below the x-axis. So here's one thing that looks like that, and it's pretty reasonable, right? The blue function, f prime of x, is positive, then 0, then negative, then 0, then positive again. That is the same as what the slopes of f of x do. Positive, then 0, then negative, then 0, then positive. And that's a little messy looking, so I'll erase those tangent lines I drew. But here's the idea. If the original function is in black, its derivative is a function that I've graphed in blue. Well, other than with graphs, how do you find the derivative f prime of x? Same way you did f prime of a, you have to take limits. So let's look at an example where f of x is the square root of x. Notice that the domain of that function is all positive numbers and 0, right? From 0 to infinity, including 0, because the square root of 0 is a perfectly fine thing. That's 0. Okay, what is f prime of x, and what's the domain of f prime of x? Well, f prime of x is this limit, the limit of a difference quotient. That's the definition of f prime of x. Well, since f of anything is the square root of that thing, I can replace f of x plus h with the square root of x plus h, and replace f of x with the square root of x, because of what the function is. And I want to point out, I know everybody knows this, but I want to point out that you can't split up square roots with addition or subtraction, so you can't split that up as the square root of x plus the square root of h. Okay, so how can we do this limit? If you try to plug in h equals 0, you get 0 over 0. That's no good. So I'm going to multiply by 1, which won't change anything, but the 1 I'm going to multiply by is this fraction. This is rationalizing the numerator or multiplying by the conjugate. There's lots of names for this. But what it does is it makes the top it have the form a minus b times a plus b, so it'll work out to a squared minus b squared. That means the top becomes x plus h with no square root minus x with no square root. That's nice and easy. Now the bottom's complicated, but we'll have to live with that. Okay, the top reduces just to h. 
and now I can cancel. So I have the limit of 1 over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. But now it doesn't look like 0 over 0. Now if I try to plug in h equals 0, it works just fine, and I get 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x, more commonly known as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So that's the derivative. That's f prime of x. What's its domain? Well, still x needs to be positive, but now x equals 0 is not fine. You can't have 1 over 2 times the square root of 0 because you'd have a 0 on the bottom of the fraction. So the domain of the derivative can be different than the domain of the original function. And in this case, it is different. Okay, Quickly, there's a few other ways to write the derivative other than f prime of x. If you're referring to f of x as y, then f prime of x would be y prime, the derivative. Here's a bunch of other ways. Leibniz notation, or Leibniz notation, depending on who you ask, uh, is this d something over d something. So dy dx, usually we don't say the over part, dy dx is another way to write or say the derivative of y. And this comes from um, change in y over change in x, but we take limits, so instead of deltas we use d's. So dy over dx, or df dx, or d dx of f of x, all of those mean the same thing. It's the derivative of y or the derivative of f. You can also use so-called operator notation. We won't use this much, but a capital D can also mean take the derivative. So d f of x means take the derivative of f of x. And if you want to be really clear that the variable you're dealing with is x, you write d subscript x f of x. That means take the derivative with respect to x of f of x. Right, and that's the rate of change of the function f compared to x. Okay, f prime of a means plug in the x value a into your derivative. And another way to write that if you're using these other notations is to do a vertical line and then at the bottom of it write x equals a. Um, that means evaluate this function at x equals a, or plug in x equals a. Okay. So that was some notation. I just want you to be able to recognize it. All right. The word differentiable means has a derivative. So a function is differentiable at a if it has a derivative at a. That is, f prime of a exists. Notice that when we talk about limits existing, they might be infinite, but derivatives can't be infinity or negative infinity. That's just the rule. So that's differentiable at a point. It's differentiable on an interval if, well, it has to have a derivative at every point in that interval. So for every x value in the interval, the derivative needs to exist. And one of the most important facts about differentiability is if you've got a function that has a derivative at the point a, so f is dif differentiable at a, then you automatically know that it is also continuous at that point. So you can't have a derivative unless you're also continuous. But it doesn't work the other way around. If it's continuous, it's not necessarily differentiable. It might be, it might not be. Okay, so if it's differentiable, then it's continuous. But if it's continuous, you don't know anything about differentiability. We'll talk more about this stuff in class, but for now, just answer this question. If this is the graph of f of x, and that's supposed to be a straight line, what is the graph of f prime of x? I'll see you in class.